Hi, everybody. This is Tamara from Moogly. And um, Jeff, I think our speaker's on. So bear with us just a minute here. We are live. I can hear myself. Okay, there we go. Now we're all set. Hi, everybody. This is Tamara from Moogly, and we are very obviously coming to you live today from my basement in Iowa, but excited to do another Yarnspirations Lunch and Learn. Today, we are talking about the Red Heart Crochet Peppermint Swirl Pillow. You can see I've got the pattern ready to go right here. Um, I did a little bit of working with this pattern last night and it is just a lot of fun. Um, I think this is gonna be great for all sorts of uh, holiday decorations actually. But since we are live, I'm gonna take a minute here and tap on my laptop a minute so I can see any of your comments and questions here as we're live. Okay, looks like we're rolling, all right. Okay, so let's get to it. As I said, today we are talking about the Red Heart Crochet Peppermint Swirl Pillow, which is a fantastic new pattern. Um, great for making pillows really of all sizes. It's a very adaptable pattern. And if you're not interested in pillows, I think you could take these and make a really fun garland or even holiday ornaments for your tree. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's switch to the hand camera and talk about what we need for today's pattern. All righty. So of course we want to have our written pattern. You can see right here the Red Heart Crochet Peppermint Swirl Pillow. You can grab that link from the chat or you can go to your favorite search engine to look for that on yarnspirations.com. This is a free pattern download and it calls for two different colors of Red Heart Super Saver. I've been making the first part already here from these skeins. I'm using cherry red and white, which are the traditional colors for a peppermint, but of course you can use whichever colors you like. And I'm thinking you're going to be able to get a few um, well, probably if you make it full size, it looks like you could probably get one pillow out of uh, the red and maybe a second pillow there out of the white, depending on how big you want to make it. Now, this does call for a USI 5.5 millimeter Susan Bates crochet hook. I have mine right here in the twist and lock style. And you'll also need a round pillow form to actually stuff your pillow with. Now, I don't happen to have that round pillow form with me today. Um, I want to note it says round pillow form 16 inches. I recommend if you can find it, go over that just a little bit. And this is a personal preference thing. We're making a 16 inch pillow. You can see right here, according to our instructions. And I personally, I like my pillows a little overstuffed. So I always like to go up a little bit bigger than the pillow forms called for, so to speak. So if I'm making a 16 inch pillow, I might get an 18 inch pillow form if you can find it. But everybody likes theirs a little different. If you like a little bit flatter pillow, then you might want to stick with the 16 inch form. Just a personal preference. So let's go ahead and talk about how we make this pillow. We are going to be working tapestry style. So that means we're going to be working with both of these colors in every round of the pattern. So we're going to be working over the color we're not using. If you look really closely at the photo, you can see how the red peeks through a little bit on the white, and it's a little harder to see, but the white also peeks through a little bit on the red. This is a feature of tapestry crochet. So if you see that in your stitches, just know you're not doing anything wrong. That's just how tapestry crochet looks sometimes. Those little colors can do a little bit of peeking through. Now, since it's a pillow, we can only see one side of it, of course, in this photo, but we want to make two pieces, a front and a back, that will then seam up together with this really, really fun seaming thing. So, uh, seaming technique, I should say. Uh, so I definitely wanna get to that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, quick note before we do, there's also a chart for those who prefer that to the written instructions. So I'm going to start with color A, which for this pattern is our red. So I'm gonna pull that up right here. Hi, everybody, thanks for tuning in live. All right, so we start each piece exactly the same. They're gonna be identical. Start with color A and we're going to chain four. So I'm just going to get my, you can start with a slip knot if you prefer. I like to start with just sort of a little twist on my hook there and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we want to slip stitch that very first chain we made to create a ring to work into. Now, if you're a big fan of the magic ring, you could absolutely start your pillow that way instead. This is kind of the standard way that isn't a magic ring. So whichever method you prefer to start working in the circle is going to work perfectly fine for this pattern because we are going to want to pull on that tail to really close up our center circle there. After that, we start with a chain of 
three for our first round. One, two, three. And the top of this third chain, or rather this whole chain of three, is going to count as our first double crochet for the round. So if you want to, you can put a slip st uh, stitch marker rather in the top of that third chain, or you can just keep an eye on it. With our color changes in this pattern, it'll be pretty easy to see which is the first and last stitch of each row. You just have to remember that that chain three does count as your first double crochet. If you prefer, there are double crochet substitutes out there and you can absolutely substitute one of those for this chain three if you prefer. So let's go ahead and continue. Now for this first round, we're going to stick with all color A. We want to work nine more double crochets into the ring. So including that chain three, that will be a total of 10. So I'm just gonna go right into the center of that ring. And as I make these stitches and work into this ring, it's gonna take me around the circle and I want to continue working over this tail. Even though this isn't officially a magic ring or magic circle, we can use this tail to help close up that circle when we're all done and make sure it's nice and tight so that our pillow form doesn't show through. So for this first round, we don't have to worry about any color changes. We get it nice and established with a total of 10 double crochets in the round here. And I know I'm keeping my thumb over it. It's just a good place to anchor it, but I'm working right into that center of that circle with every single stitch. There we are. All right, I'm gonna pull up some more yarn. One of the great things about Red Heart Super Saver, it does have a center pull. So that lays really nicely. You can tell by looking at the end, how you can see the layers there. That's how you know it's going to be a good center pull ball of yarn. All right, so probably got a few more here. With each stitch again, I'm just making sure to capture that tail end inside the stitch. And I want to keep going until I've got a total of 10. So if you're watching live, don't forget to hit that like button. Let YouTube, or rather let Facebook know that we are live. And we're showing you something good here for the holidays. So let's stop and count. Let's see how many man I managed to put in there. We've got our chain three. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have one too many, no problem. I'll just go ahead and pull that right on out. So this is where you can see working over that tail end is going to be really handy. Even though we did a chain four, I can still stabilize that hole a little bit with my other hand and pull on that tail. And it will pull up quite a bit tighter like that. And to make it even tighter, when you go to weave in this end, you can really cinch up that tail from the inside as you sew it in. So after we've got those 10 stitches made in round one, we can go ahead and join to the top of that first double crochet, which will be that third chain of our chain three, if that's what you used, with a slip stitch. There we are. So after you use your tail end to cinch up that center hole, this one will lay a little bit flatter. So if you find it's curling up on you, don't worry about it. Once you cinch in that middle, it really does pull this nice and flat. So round one is pretty easy, right? So far we've just chained four to make a circle and then worked 10 double crochets into that circle. In round two is where we're going to start switching colors. So you want to make sure to have the tail end of your second color ready to go. Now I'm using white and I'm on a white background, which I know is a little hard to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a purple background up here. Maybe not super holiday-y, but it'll let us see the white yarn a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and get started on row two, or our second round. With A, again, that's our red color. We're going to chain three. We're always going to start the same way. Chain three with color A. Then we're going to work one double crochet in that first stitch. So the same stitch we slip stitched to. There we go. And I actually put that in the wrong spot. Let me undo that one. It happens sometimes. Let me pull that stitch back out. We all make mistakes, right? One of the things I love about crochet is how, how easy it is to fix our mistakes when we make them. My hook did not wanna go into the top of that chain. There we go. Now I'm in there. Alrighty, so we start our second round with a chain three and then a double crochet in that same stitch. So we've made our increase there. Then we switch to color B for two stitches in the next stitch. So we need to go back. When we make this stitch, anytime we have a switch, we want to finish the stitch with the next color. So what does that mean? I know I only want two stitches of red here before I switch to white. So on that second stitch, I'm gonna go in that stitch again, yarn over and pull up my loop, yarn over and pull through two, stop there with two loops left on the hook, 
I'm just going to drop the red color and let it hang for now and pick up my color B, my white color. I want to give myself several inches because I still want to leave some yarn to weave in. Just yarn over and pull through and finish the stitch with my new color. Now I'm all set up to work with color B into the next stitch. So I just want to kind of hold it gently so I don't accidentally pull this end through and make this loop really large. Just kind of gently hold on to it here as I go right into the next stitch. Now as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and work over the end of my white and the yarn of the red yarn, my color A, that is attached to the skein. Because we're working tapestry style, we work over the unused color. And right now we're using red and working over white. So let me show you here. We're just gonna go ahead and take our white yarn, hold those tails kind of behind our stitch, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So you can see how those ends are trapped in our stitch. Now with the white end, I did that just to secure it a little bit so it wouldn't pull out on us. I can go ahead and drop that. But I wanna continue to work over the red working yarn, the end attached to the skein, not the tail, whenever I'm working with white. When I'm working with red, I wanna work over the white end that's attached to our skein. So for this round, we are working two stitches in each stitch. I've got one, it's time to make my second one. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, make sure I'm still working over the red there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. But now, because it's the second one, I need to switch back to red. So I just drop the white one to the back. And because I've been working over it, you can see the red is right here. So I can yarn over and pull that through. Again, working over the unused color as we go around is called tapestry style crochet. So now we have two red stitches in the next stitch. We yarn over, go to the very next stitch, now we wanna make sure that we bring the white along with us. Again, not the tail, but the side attached to the skein itself. And you can just hold it right there, as you see, right behind the stitch, so that it's trapped inside there as we crochet. So there's one, and here's our second one. We still wanna trap the white, but we stop with two loops left on our hook, drop our red yarn, and pick up our white yarn to yarn over and finish the stitch. Then we do it again. Yarn over, go to the next stitch, Make sure we trap the red yarn now inside that stitch. There's one. And then we do our second one. When we get to two loops left on the hook, we drop our white and yarn over and finish the stitch with our red. And you can see how this really beautifully sets us up for those stripes for our peppermint. And this is basically the same technique we're going to use throughout our pillow we're just going to have longer repeats, more of each stitch so that those stripes become wider and work their way out. So now I'm back in red, so I make one stitch, start the second stitch, I've got my white trapped back there. Stop with two loops left on the hook, drop the red, yarn over the, with the white and finish that stitch. So you can see how you might have some color bleed, but if you, I look really, like to try and hold the yarn basically behind the stitches. It's usually described as laying on top, but I find if I hold it behind a little bit, it seems to hide it just a little bit better. Remember to stop with two loops left on your hook when it's time to do the color change. Yarn over with the new color and move on. Find the next one and here we go. Now this color change is a great way to change colors in most projects. When you change color in the middle of a row, it gives you, as you can see, a really nice clean break here. Whether or not you're working over the unused color is what makes it tapestry style or not. Otherwise, it's just a great way to change color in crochet. Wait till you've got the two loops left, yarn over with your new color and pull through. So tapestry style like this is typically worked in the round, which is what we're doing in this pattern, so you can continue carrying the unused color all the way around. So sometimes you'll find really interesting tapestry crochet patterns. Um, with repeating motifs that are worked as like tote bags and things like that. And it's just a really fun technique to explore. And this pillow is a great way to do that. So you can see, I'm just continuing to work two stitches in each stitch. Every time I make that second one, I stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over with a new color and pull through. Now, if you've ever done this before, you might have noticed what's happening to my yarn right here behind my hand. You couldn't really see it on camera there, if I pull up a little bit more white, but you can see how it's twisting together. 
This is very normal, and this happens when you're doing tapestry crochet, and I like to handle it as I get further along, maybe halfway through the round. Here, I'll handle it at the end of this round, since this is a short one, since it's one of the first ones. Now, this is going to be my last stitch of this round, because I'm, I have one, two, three, four, five red stripes going, one, two, three, four, five white stripes going. So I still want to finish this last one with the red, so that I've got my red yarn on my hook for the slip stitch to that first red stitch. And that really keeps our nice clean color changes going. So that is what it should look like at the end of round one. And this, let me pull this little tail out of the way here, is what it looks like from the back. Not quite as nice, but that's going to be on the inside of our pillow. Now, how do we handle all these twists? Like I say, it just comes from dropping and picking up those yarns. I'm going to pull up big on this loop so that it doesn't pull out. I can secure that with a stitch marker if needed. And then I will just start untwisting it. I just hold on to my project and twist it a few times. Get the tails out of there. They're trying to get all involved. There we go. And now you can see it's all untwisted. There's maybe one more twist on there. There we go all straightened out and ready for the next round. So every every once in a while, you can just stop and twist your project to untwist those two colors. Since we're only working with two colors, it makes it a little easier. There we go. So now we have, there we are, second round. Round one was just red. Second round, we introduced the stripes. From here on out, we're going to keep doing the same thing, but our stripes are gonna get a little bit wider. We're going to increase, which makes means work two stitches in the first stitch of each color, and then one stitch in each stitch of that color afterwards. When we get to white, we switch to white. When we get to red, we switch to red. So you can follow along with the written instructions, or you can just really look at what you've got right in front of you. So let's start what would be round three together. We chain three, one, two, three, just like we did before. We always start with chain three in our color A, Yarn over, work a stitch right into that same stitch. So we always increase, work two stitches in the first stitch of the color. Then we continue working that color in each stitch of the same color to continue our stripes. So now we've got another red ahead of us. We know we need to put a red there, but I can look ahead and see the next one's white. So now I need to switch. Stop with two loops left on the hook and pull up my yarn now. Very common mistake that I just made that I, lots of us make when we're working tapestry crochet. I forgot to bring that white right along with me. So I'm gonna pull those stitches back out and go back to that chain three, yarn over, go into that stitch, and now make sure you grab that white, bring it right along. You can just lay it right on top of your hook, yarn over, pull your loop through so it's trapped, and now it's right along with us again. So you will have a little bit of jog on the back of your fabric every time you pull up that little bit of white to the next row. But again, that's going to be on the inside of our pillow, so that's perfectly fine. Make sure we're working over our other color there. Get to our last two loops, drop the red again, yarn over and finish our stitch with the white. Now we're looking at the first stitch of this color, so we know we need to put two stitches there. Bring along the other yarn, we'll need it again. So there's one in that stitch, a second in that stitch. Let me get Pull that loop through again there. It got a little caught on the yarn. There we go. So two of that color in the first one, and we just keep in each one until we run out of that color. We've just got one. So we stop there, drop the white, pick up the red. Pull up a little bit more here from my skeins. I always prefer to control the tension with my hands rather than letting the skeins do it. So you want it a little bit loose out of the skein there. There we go. Now we're in another red section, so we know we need two stitches in the first one. Make sure our white comes along for the ride. There we are, there's one, and two, and one more stitch of that color. So we go in there, start our stitch, but finish it with the next color. So now you can see how those stripes are just continuing to grow right on out. And every row or round, rather, after this is exactly the same. Two stitches of that color in the first one, and then keep going in that color until you come to the next. Worked evenly. So we had 10 stripes. Remember, we had five red and five white, so 10 stripes. That means we'll be adding 
10 stitches in every round. There we are. But you really don't even have to count your rounds or stitches. You can really look at, look at what's happening in the previous round to tell you what you need to do next. When the next stitch is red, it's time to switch to red. When the next stitch is white, it's time to switch to white. And we can just continue working around. So remember, the white will bleed through a little bit on the red. The red will bleed through a little bit on the white. But for me, I find the best way to try to hide it as much as possible is not so much holding it on top of the previous row, but kind of right behind it. So it's hidden behind a little bit like this. And then when I go to switch colors, you can see here down to those last two, I'm going to drop the red to this side because I'm right-handed. I would do it to the other side if I was left-handed and pick the new color up on this side. For me, I find this tends to hide it a little bit better, but you can experiment with your own project and try different methods of bringing down the yarn and see with your gauge and the way you handle the yarn if it doesn't look a little better, you know, if you pick it up on the other side, for instance. This is just what I find works best for me. Now you can see I'm about halfway through here, round three. It's getting twisted again, so I can just take a quick break and do a little untwisting. I went too far. I did too much untwisting. There we go. <laughs> but that would be all right, too, I guess. As I kept going, it would untwist as I worked. So this is basically the pattern for this. The tricky part is, of course, remembering after you've put it down and come back to it, to keep trapping that other color. That's really the main thing because you wanna make sure to bring that along with you so that it's right where you need it when it's time to change colors again. Now, our time is going far too quickly, so let me bring up this little sample that I worked on last night and we can look at this closer together here. You can see here, I use that tail end to really cinch in that center there so it's nice and solid of that first round. And then here, we can continue. You can see how I worked my way up. There was my chain three, and we're just continuing. There's two stitches in the first stitch of each color, and then one stitch across until it's time to change. So with every round, you'll have more stitches there before you change colors again. Each section will grow by one. So you can see here was two, here we have three stitches, here we have four, here we have five. We'd keep on adding as we continue. So for this pattern, we don't have a specific number of rounds. We simply keep working in this pattern until it gets to be 16 inches or so around. Now, again, I mentioned at the beginning, I love a puffy pillow. So if you come up to 15 and a half, I'd stop there. You're gonna have a, a little bit squishier pillow. You might have to stuff it in there a little tighter, but it's going to have more of that fluffy look. So if anything, I would stop a little shy rather than a little over unless of course you've gotten an even bigger pillow form and that's the fun of this you can stop here this is a great size for a nice big coaster you can see I've got my my coffee right here that's a great size you could absolutely string these up on a garland you can make them a little smaller or even a little bigger depending on your style and hang them on a Christmas tree for an ornament or of course you can take two of them put them together and make the pillow so let's talk about that here you can see on the second page you can see really clearly, it's got a really fun edging for putting these two pieces together. These aren't simply sewn together like you might expect a pillow piece to be. This is a little different and it's a lot of fun. So let me cut off my ends here on the piece I was working. And we're going to go ahead and pretend that this one is actually two pieces. I'm gonna fold it together so you can see how this comes together. Now, if I were to do this, I'd probably try and match up my reds and my whites on my two pieces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start with color A again. And again, you'd want to do this with two pieces together. I'm just pretending for the sake of time here with our one piece folded in half. Now you can see I did fold it this way. So my right side is on the outside. You'd wanna make sure your two right sides are on the outside when you start putting these together. And you can get away most of the way around or at least half of the way around before you put your pillow form in and then continue working your way around. But basically to join them, we're going to just make sure to work through both layers at once. So you wanna work through one layer of your pillow and then the second layer of your pillow. So that you're kind of seaming them together while you add this really fun border. So let's add that border together. I'm gonna to pick up my color A. I've inserted my hook. I just randomly pick a first stitch. Red seems like a good place to spot. Start rather, we can match those up. Yarn over 
and I'm going to pull up my loop. I'm going to chain one, so I'm joining with a slip stitch, and I'm going to go ahead and put a single crochet right through both of those stitches. We have a little disagreement in the PDF between the written instructions and the charted instructions, and in my opinion, the charted instructions are the ones we want to go with here. So we've worked a single crochet through both of those layers. So you can see it's crocheting through both layers at once. So those are gonna be held together. Then we chain four. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna pull up on this loop so that it doesn't pull out. I could also put a stitch marker in there if desired, but we're going to be doing this several times. So for this one, just pull up a big loop. Then grab your white yarn or whatever your color B is. And we're gonna do the same thing in the very next stitch. We go into the next loop right there on that side, straight through the other side. Get our tail straightened out there, yarn over and pull our loop up and through. And do the same thing. Chain one, so it's nice and attached there, and single crochet through both of those layers. Then chain four. One, two, three, four, and pull up on that loop and drop. Now we go back to the red one. Put our hook back in our loop, pull it back down to size. And now what we're going to do is we're just gonna cross right over this one, right in front of it. And it's gonna look funny, but when you come back around, it'll make more sense. We go to the next unworked stitch pair. So through the front, right through the other side, single crochet. So we pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two for a single crochet. There we are, and then chain four again. One, two, three, four. Pull up our loop and let it drop. Go back to our white one or our color B. Bring our loop down to size, come right over to the front. So if you're left-handed, it'll go this way. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go this way right over what we just did, letting that hang out and back, find the next unused stitch, and the next stitch right behind it there. Yarn over and pull up our loop, make our single crochet and chain four. Two, three, four. Pull up our loop and let it drop. Come back to our red one, find our loop, Come right on over again, just as we did before. Find the next pair of stitches here. Yarn over, pull our loop through for our single crochet and chain four. One, two, three, four. Pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. There we are. Now we let that drop and come back to our white one. Put our hook right in that loop. Bring Push the red to the back, bring the white to the front, and now we can start this section. Always kind of look at your sections. If you match them up like that, it'll make a lot easier for you to make sure and keep track that you haven't you know, gotten off track somewhere, going into you know, the wrong one on the back or something. Then chain four, let's see that's three and four, pull up our loop and come back to the red one. So you can see how that's going to keep going over and create that really fun border. This is a border I've admired on other projects, but I'd never done before. So I was really excited to finally give it a try with this one. And you can see, even from the back, because of course this would be the right side of your other half of your pillow, even from behind, this is a really attractive border. So it looks a little funny up front, but if you think about it, as you come up here and you come around, when you get to the end with that white one, you'll join to that one in front and you'll join to the red one in front. So do the red one first, and then the white one would come up and join to that one to continue that really smooth look for that border. So with that, we have officially <laughs> run out of time. So this was how to make the Red Heart Crochet Peppermint Swirl Pillow. You can see right here, we went over how to build out that pattern. You can see on the picture here how those stripes, each one is just getting longer by one stitch because we increase in the first one and then just work even across. Increase in the first one, work even across. So really you can make this pillow any size you like, 
make it smaller as ornaments, but adding this really fun border really helps pull it together. And of course, if you don't wanna make it 3D, you can work this through just one layer as well. You can also add this to all sorts of blankets and other projects, and it's just a really fun look. So with that, we can go ahead and come back to the other camera. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, it was a lot of fun to finally get a chance to try that candy cane border out myself. Um, something I'd been looking forward to. And it's just a really fun project. So I hope you are getting ready for the holidays and I hope you are enjoying your fall as well. Thank you so much again for joining us for this Lunch and Learn. Don't forget to look for the Red Heart Crochet Peppermint Swirl Pillow on yarnspirations.com and we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.